good morning students today we will show you some practicals of salt analysis so already you have done uh, the anion test how to do dry test how to do wet test you know so today i will show you uh, about the dry test for cation so as you have done dry test for anion similarly you have to do for cation also cation also have the dry test and wet test so first time today i will do uh, dry test for cation but before watching the video you open your copy you follow the procedure then you can understand it so according to your procedure in dry test of cation the first experiment is heating in a dry test tube so that experiment i will show you how to do it actually heating in a dry test tube means you have to take one dry test tube and you use one uh, test tube holder and in this dry test tube since these are dry test that's why the test tube should be dry so in this dry test tube you take little amount of salt the salt whatever you will get you take little amount of salt like this and after taking the salt directly you have to heat the salt so you heat the salt like this way this is called heating in a dry test tube so look the observation now see the salt was white now it turns yellow color now this is another salt see the observation after heating see the observation so every salt do not give taste uh, in this heating in a dry test tube so you may get some observation or you may not so now in this case there is no observation but here you can see after heating the salt becomes yellow in color initially it was white now it becomes yellow now after getting the yellow color you will see the salt properly on cooling it remains as yellow or it turns to white that you have to say that's why in observation you have you have written yellow when hot and white when cold another observation you have written yellow when hot and cold so now at hot condition it becomes yellow now in cool condition it remains as yellow it do not change the yellow remain here so that's why your observation is the third one yellow when hot and cold that means your inference will be pb2 plus may be present so after getting your salt you take one dry test tube in the dry test tube you take little amount of salt then you directly heat it after heating you see the observation whether some color changing or some gases are evolved or not so from that observation you can find out or you will get the idea about your cation now i move to second experiment the flame test how you have to do the flame test actually to do the flame test you have to use one platinum wire like this actually this is the wire which is called platinum wire and the wire is sealed with a glass tube this uh, platinum wire you have to collect it so first time you take the platinum wire to do the flame test and the platinum wire should be clean so whether it is clean or not to check it just to dip the oil in concentrated hcl like this then you heat it in flame there should not be any color in the flame that means the oil is clean so if you get some other color that means uh, oil is contaminated with something like this so you can clean the oil so now the oil becomes clean so how to do flame test after getting the salt you use the platinum oil first time you dip the platinum oil in concentrated hcl always hcl is used you cannot use other acid hcl is used because it produces some chloride and chloride salts are volatile that's why you can see some colored flame if you use other acid you don't get the taste that's why hcl is used here after that you just touch the salt with the wire like this so some salts are sticking uh, in the wire so now you heat it and you observe the color what type of color flame you will get it's like pea green color again i'll show you just to dip in hcl then you touch the salt see the color of the flame and here observation you have written flame test p green flame that means your salt contain ba2 plus i mean barium as your cation 
So since these are dry tests, dry test is not the confirmatory test, so uh, barium may be present. So you will get the idea about the cation, which cation is present in your soil. So this is the process to do the flame test. Okay, now I will show you another dry test for cation, uh, that is borax bead test. Actually this test, you have to perform only when your salt is colored. If your salt is white, no need to perform this test. For example, suppose this is your salt, you have seen this salt is blue colored. Huh? So if you get this type of colored salt, then you have to do borax bead test. So to do this test, platinum wire is required. So first thing, what you have to do, in the platinum wire, you have to make a loop. A small loop you have to make, I will show you the loop. So like this way, you have to make a loop in the wire. After making the loop, you heat the loop in the hot condition and your wire should be clean. You take one compound which is called borax, it's the compound of boron. You take some amount of borax in your loop. So after taking little amount of borax in loop, you have to heat it again. I will take little more. Now you can see in the flame, borax when you heat it, it swells like popcorn, it swells and after swelling, it forms a bead and that's why it is called borax bead test. So have you seen the bead? It's a glass type bead. Now the colored salt, whatever you have got, at the hot condition of the bead, you touch the salt. After touching the salt, you have to heat in the flame. But when you heat it in the flame, you see the flame, there are two layers of flame. The inner layer is blue color and outer layer is yellow color. The outer layer is called oxidizing flame and the inner layer is called reducing flame. So when you heat the bead in the flame, you have to heat it in oxidizing flame and in reducing flame separately and you will get different types of color in oxidizing flame and reducing flame. So at the hot condition of the bead, I touch the salt. The bead contains some amount of salt. Then I will heat in the outer flame, I mean in oxidizing flame. Now after heating, you have to see the color of the bead. Now the bead turns green in color. That means you have written in the observation green when hot, blue when cold in oxidizing flame. That means your salt contain copper ion. Similarly, you have to heat in the reducing flame also. I mean in inner layer. When you heat it in reducing flame, then also you will get some color. And here you have written colorless when hot, reddish when cold in the reducing flame. So you have to heat the bead in the oxidizing flame and reducing flame separately. Then you will get different color of the bead and from the color of the bead you will get the idea about your cation present in your salt. So this is about the borax bead test like this way you have to perform it. The last experiment you have written ammonium radical test. Actually this test is performed only when your salt contain ammonium ion. But uh, ammonia ion directly you cannot say my salt contain ammonia ion. So when, whenever you get the white salt, you have to perform this test. So how you have to do the ammonium radical test? To do this test, the salt, whatever you have got the salt, you take one part like this. With this one part of salt, you have to take three part of sodium carbonate Na2CO3 one part salt three part sodium carbonate then you have to mix it you can note it uh, you just you have written ammonium radical test now below that you can note it so to do this test we have to take one part of salt and three part of sodium carbonate after that we have to mix it so after mixing you collect one test tube and in the test tube you take little amount of mixer so like this way you take little amount of mixer after taking the mixer you heat the mixer after heating see the observation you may get some fumes 
or you may get some smell of ammonia gas if your salt contain ammonium ion so some fumes are coming now i'll take the smell of the fumes yes it's pungent smell so pungent smell ammonia gas and whatever it is ammonia gas or not to confirm it you can do one test just to take one glass rod like this because the gas may be some other gases because so many gases are pungent smelling gases the rod just to dip in hcl you keep in the mouth of the test tube the fumes becomes dense so whether the gas is ammonia or not to prove it you take one glass rod the glass rod you dip in hcl and then you keep in the mouth of the test tube then the fumes becomes dense that means it is confirmed this is ammonia gas ammonia gas is coming due to presence of ammonia ion so these are about the dry test this is the way uh, how we have to do in the laboratory so when you come in the laboratory then you can do it like this way thank you